The prevalence of obesity is still rising around the world, not only in adults, but also in children. This is especially alarming because it means the next generation will have spent their entire life under the increased burden of chronic disease that comes with obesity. This is in stark contrast with the idea that obesity is preventable. But is it really preventable? We live in a world where food is available anywhere, anytime. In this 24-7 society, most of us eat for extended periods of day, extended periods of time during the days, and especially shift workers who represent one-third of the U.S. workforce. This matters because my work has shown that not only what you eat, but also when you eat can impact your metabolic health. My name is Amandine Schex. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Nutrition and Integrative Physiology. And the goal of my research is to harness nutrition and the circadian clock to improve metabolic health for all. In France, where I received my scientific uh, education, the science curriculum goes from the infinitely big to the infinitely small. The infinitely big never really interested me. The truth is, the idea of other galaxies, stars over the living form, it scares me. The infinitely big, on the, the infinitely small on the other end, that fascinates me. It always has fascinated me. The idea that the complexity of life can be encoded and transmitted through a single strings of DNA really thrills me to that day. I grew up in a very small village in the south of France named Vernel, which means narrow streets. I, was, I fell in love with biology in 10th grade thanks to a really inspiring high school teacher and thanks to Mendelian genetics. I was really fortunate to get a, a scholarship from the French government to go receive my education in Paris in one of the uh, most uh, uh, brilliant institutions in Paris, the École Normale Supérieure. Um, there, I received a, a secured a fellowship uh, to get a PhD degree, and I decided to move back down to Marseille, uh, closer to family and you know home. It's during my PhD work that I stumbled uh, uh, around across the circadian clock. Uh, it was research serendipities, and I decided that I needed to know everything there was to know about the circadian clock. That's the reason why I moved to Dr. Pena lab at the Salk Institute in, in San Diego, because Dr. Pena is an expert, is a well-known expert about circadian clock and circadian biology. And then in 2021, I opened my lab here at the University of Utah, because it felt like home, not just because of the stunning mountains, but also because of the superb community of researchers that are passionate by nutrition and metabolic disease and metabolic health. Now, I want to tell you about my passion for the last 10 years and hopefully the next 30 years, the circadian clock. The circadian clock is an internal 24-hour timing system. It's your body's internal watch. It helps you keep track of the time of day. It's present in all life form. It confers an evolutionary advantage. And importantly, it's an anticipatory system. Really what it means is that it helps you every day anticipate what's going to happen and what happens every day on a recurring basis, namely being active, eating during the day, and going to sleep at night. The molecular clock is a cell autonomous molecular machinery that's rather complex and present in, uh, in all cells. But um, to simplify it, it's essentially like a pendulum that oscillates with a period of 24 hours. And importantly, uh, clock protein controls the expression of many genes in the genome so that genes go up and down uh, at specific time of the day. There was a study in non-human primate that showed that 97% uh, of the genome, the genome can cycle in at least one organ. So this is the extent of uh, the wide control of genomic expression by the circadian clock. And some of these genes are genes that help you process your food or regulate your metabolism. 
If your circadian clock is perturbed, uh, a condition known as circadian misalignment, this is associated with disease, psychiatric disorder, but also physical disorders, and amongst them, uh, metabolic disease, cardiometabolic uh, syndrome, and obesity. My work looking into the relationship between the clock and metabolic health started with a simple observation that I'm going to describe you now. So if you look at the mice on the left, uh, they are fed a normal diet and they are metabolically healthy. And what we observe is that they eat most of their food, about 80%, during the dark phase, which is the active phase for rodents because they are nocturnal. Now, if you feed this animal a high-fat diet, they become obese and they become diabetic. That's the mouse on the right. What we observe is that these animals start eating throughout the day, meaning uh, they eat both uh, during the active phase, but also when they should be sleeping. So we ask, well, what is, you know, the, what is the contribution of this mistimed food consumption uh, to their metabolic disease state? Oops, and this is how we develop time-restricted feeding, which really is just putting the food in uh, at the beginning of the, the active phase and then take it out. And this was the beginning of an expected um, success science story. Um, so when we did this, it's the, the graph on, in, in blue here. Oh, that doesn't work. The, the, the dark blue shows that the animals that were maintained on time-restricted feeding did not gain weight, as opposed to the one that had food access all the time. Uh, they were also protected from the development of type 2 diabetes. And importantly, if you take the blue uh, mice that were already obese and then switch them on time-restricted feeding, they lose weight and it also uh, prevented the progression of diabetes and met uh, type 2 diabetes and metabolic disease. Um, you know, a handful of years later, we further shows that, showed that the benefits of time-restricted feeding were independent of a molecular clock, which really means that enforcing feeding and uh, eating and fasting rhythm act as, uh, as, as a, uh, act as a clock for your body and can help you maintain your metabolic fitness. Time-restricted feeding uh, really, um, you know, become mainstream in 2018 uh, with an article from the New York Times, which titled pretty accurately that when we eat or don't eat may be critical uh, for health. And this was a renaissance of circadian biology research with now uh, studies around the world investigating the best timing to not only eat, but also exercise, take medication, uh, etc. So in my lab, of course, we're very interested in following up uh, on time-restricted feeding and test uh, whether we can prevent other diseases than just metabolic disease. Uh, we're also very interested in trying to understand the mechanism and also collaborating on some of the many, uh, over 100 human clinical trials ongoing word right now uh, about time-restricted feeding. To wrap up, I'm a first-gen college graduate. I am myself a community. I am so grateful to so many people, friends, and colleagues who helped me uh, along the way to get where I am now, which I never believed uh, I would be initially. I'm a humanist. I believe science must integrate diverse views to benefit all. And I'm absolutely committed to train the next generation of ex exceptional and open-minded scientists in a space devoid of racism and sexism that supports both the group and the individual. And I thank you very much.